We have Pennsylvania Congresswoman Madeline Dean here with me now. She's a Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee. And so as we're hearing this report, do you happen to know, do you have a suspicion of who this person or people connected to the Trump administration or to Congress who would have been talking to Michael Flynn and perhaps uh, potentially obstructing justice as he was considering cooperating with the government or cooperating with the government? Do you have any idea who they are, a suspicion of who they are? No, I have no idea. And in fact, you saw, and your reporting repeats, uh, reporting I read earlier today, that it is either somebody connected with the Trump administration or Congress. So uh, with that kind of vagary, I don't know. What I did do was dig back into the report and take a look at a partial transcript of a voicemail that was left by Trump's attorney uh, to Flynn's attorney. Uh, a voicemail that was transcribed in the report. Uh, so uh, what it says to me, this reporting today, is just another reminder of how grave the situation is, how important it is that we have uh, the entire Mueller report, that we have Mr. McGahn come before us on Tuesday and produce the documents that we had already previously subpoenaed, because this is the most deceitful, corrupt administration uh, that we've seen in my lifetime adheres nothing to the truth, cares nothing for our system of government, uh, and just uh, spent, if you read the report, there are 200 pages of descriptions of the President of the United States obstructing justice. Would you like to know why this person or people were not charged, and how do you see Congress's role in getting some of this information to know if Congress should pursue this lead? Well, this is uh, our role. Uh, and you see that on my committee, the Judiciary Committee, that I'm privileged to sit with, uh, with Chairman Nadler and many other talented people who care desperately about the rule of law. There are five other committees of jurisdiction. Uh, so absolutely, we want to find out who these players are, what they did, and will they be charged? Are they already charged? You know there's an awful lot of redactions in here, matters under investigation. Uh, but Mr. Flynn uh, and Manafort and Papadopoulos, the report reads, uh, so damning of the behaviors of the people that this president surrounded himself with. The Attorney General Bill Barr says he wants to make sure that the FBI didn't have its, quote, thumb on the scale when it was looking for reasons to investigate the president. Um, here's what he told Fox News. I thought when I came in uh, from the outside that uh, all the questions that I had and many other people had uh, that would be readily uh, answered uh, once I got in, but I haven't found that to be the case. I've been trying to get answers to questions, and I found that a lot of the answers have been inadequate. What is your reaction to that? It's stunning. Uh, this is the top law enforcement officer of our country, of our nation, sounding more like the president uh, in his obfuscating uh, than a law enforcement, an impartial law enforcement uh, officer. Uh, why isn't it that he wants, why isn't it that he is not offended and feel a sense of urgency about that which was found in the report? How about volume one, with more than 180 contacts by the Trump folks during the campaign uh, with Russia? They welcomed their interference. President Trump as candidate calling for Russia's interference. Uh, where's the urgency around that for this attorney general? Uh, he said in this interview with Fox News that he would be comfortable, comfortable was his word, using words like witch hunt if he, quote, had been falsely accused. Is that appropriate? Inappropriate. It, it's, it's unforgivable. Uh, but you saw that Mr. Barr won't come before our committee uh, because he is ap absolutely carrying the water of a president that is the most deceitful uh, president of our lifetime. Robert Mueller. Uh, may come before your committee. He, there's no date set for him to testify, though, at this point in time. What's the holdup? There, I know that there are conversations be, from judiciary staff directly with uh, Mr. Mueller's staff. Is it just logistics? What is your, what's your impression? What are you being told about what the, what the hang-up is? We know uh, one of the big hang-ups is the fact that the president, I guess a week ago now, claimed a blanket privilege. As we sat in committee, we got a letter stating, uh, one, that Barr had asked the president to claim privilege, and a second letter simultaneously with that identifying to our committee the president has claimed privilege. But the administration says they're okay with him testifying. That, that's a change. You, you change. It's a daily change with this administration. Remember, the president wanted full transparency of the Mueller report because it exonerated him. Well, obviously, it doesn't exonerate him. It is actually quite, it reveals criminal behavior uh, by a lot of people surrounding him and obstruction by him. It's changeable every minute with this president. There's deflection. Uh, there's look over in this shiny object. Uh, but we won't be thrown off. Uh, we will uphold our constitutional duty because this uh, president and this administration is the greatest threat to our rule of law. Now that 
the administration has signed off on Mueller coming to testify, that, that previous claim of privilege, uh, well, of the report, uh, certainly. Do you see that that is going to affect Mueller's testimony or what he can talk about with your committee at all? Or are you expecting him to be as be able to be as forthcoming as he could be without any claim of privilege from My the White House? My only judgment of Mr. Mueller and how he will speak is that he will speak credibly. Uh, he's shown himself to be a very credible public servant who for 22 months with a team of 19 others uh, did a very difficult, tricky, complicated investigation of criminal activity. Uh, and uh, inappropriate activity, uh, and he did it with such credibility. So I just expect him to be forthcoming uh, and credible. Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, his testimony has been set for uh, next Tuesday. Are you expecting that he's going to appear? We're preparing. Uh, I'm preparing. The entire team and the entire committee are preparing. We certainly hope he does. He has an important set of stories to tell as the report reveals. What's the word from his camp? Uh, what's the what's the interaction? I don't have the latest from my committee, uh, except I know that my whole team has been working with the committee to prepare. So you, we, we do you hope expect that in. there's a willing you so you expect there's a willingness on his part? I would think so. Yes, um, because uh, the report reveals his honesty and his candor about what the president tried to have him do, tried to have him fire Mueller uh, twice. Uh, and then when the news broke of that, the president went to Don McGahn and said, would you please tell the press that that's not the truth? He asked him to fire and obviously obstruct, that means, fire special counsel Mueller or have someone else fire him. Uh, and then when that broke, the president tried to obstruct the truth, obstruct justice, asking his counsel to lie for him. It's stunning information. The American people needs to see the full account.